Hello, this is a very quick introduction to creating custom brushes within Krita. The first thing to know is that the documentation in Krita is very good for this. To find the documentation, just search for Krita documentation. And on that main page, you'll see um, loading and saving brushes under the user manual. And on that page, it describes all about the brushes and the brush engines. And underneath the very beginning, there's a link to resource page. And under the resources page, you can get um, brush sets that are done by uh, very good artists so that uh, you can just load those if you want. Also on the loading and saving brushes page, there's a uh, walkthrough to show you how to make a simple inking brush. And I'm actually going to walk through that in a minute. The other thing to know about the manual, if you go to the reference manual section, underneath there, there's brushes and it talks about brush engines so if we expand that here's all the different brush engines I'm specifically going to be going over the pixel one the rest are similar and there's brush settings and the brush settings area describes all of the details about each of the settings such as the brush tips and different things okay so to edit the brushes the first thing that you need to know is that you can press F5 to bring up the editor panel or you can click on this little button right here that says edit brush settings so we're going to actually be looking at the pixel engine when you select an engine all of the brushes or uh, tools associated with that are listed up here and then here are all the settings so first I want to talk about some of the key uh, settings the first one I want to look at is actually this painting mode there's a buildup and a wash. So first let me show you the wash. And I have the opacity of this pen set very low. And if I go back and forth and back and forth over the same area, notice that it does not build up. And so it just stays at whatever that opacity is. If I change it to build up, then as I stroke over the first time and back and forth, it builds up. So that's what the painting mode's about. The next thing to talk about is the brush size. In the brush tip, you can set the diameter, but there's no way in this uh, section to actually control it with pin pressure. That's done through the flow size. Now, if I click on size, we notice that um, there is a curve there, and it says enable pin settings. But if I draw on my scratch pad, I cannot adjust the width. I have to actually click next to size and put a check next to size and so now I can see that I can vary the width of the um, brush. Next let's talk about opacity. Um, opacity can actually be affected by a number of things. Under the brush tip there's a density and depending upon some of the other settings density could affect it. Also, opacity is affected uh, by the setting itself, and you can select pin, the pin, enable the pin settings. It's also affected by flow. Um, with a low flow, the opacity can be very low. Now, another thing that you may notice, it, it uh, may not be a bug in Krita. Um, it is, is also an interaction, perhaps, with other programs, but you may see this. I have opacity all the way up, and as I draw, I cannot get the um, opacity like it should be. And also, when I look at flow, flow, the strength is 100. So I, I should be able to get full opacity, but I can't see that. Well, um, to fix that, all I need to do is change the opacity setting um, back down and back up. So there's something that may uh, be interacting. If you have that problem, just change the opacity setting back. So sometimes in Krita, um, that can happen, so you just tweak the setting. Um, and, and this affects not only brushes, but other things. So sometimes you may have some problems with other programs interacting with Krita. So let me show the effect of flow. Um, with, it, with the strength all the way up to 1, we see in the opacity is already set to, to 1. It looks very dark. If I drop the flow down pretty low, we see a grainy or fuzziness type of appearance and so that does affect opacity. So now let's go to brush tip 
and under here we see what the uh, circle looks like or the brush tip looks like. Um, we have opacity all the way up to one, we have flow down low, and as we look at the brush tip, it looks full and dark, but because the flow is low, we have that grainy appearance. But if I go here to density and I reduce density, notice what will happen to the image and what happens to the stroke. So that also can affect opacity in a certain way. And as I change randomness, uh, the pixels get a different type of appearance, can, can have a different type of appearance depending upon uh, what type of uh, tip you have. Okay, so let's talk about the things that can affect the edge. Um, of course, anti-alias underneath brush tip can, but specifically, if we look at sharpness, if I click on that, we can see, let me turn it off, and here's what the edge looks like. If I click on sharpness, notice that there's more of a jaggy edge. Conversely, if, let's look at softness. So without it being checked, here's what our stroke looks like. If I turn the strength way down, well, let's leave it up high and not much of a difference, but if I turn it down low and I have softness enabled, notice that there's a fuzzier edge. So those are the most critical properties with dealing with brushes, but of course there's many, many, many more, and you should look in the uh, documentation for those. But now let's do a walkthrough of actually creating a brush. So this is the actual uh, step through or the walkthrough in the manual. So I'm just going to bring up the brush editor and remember that you can press F5 to do that or click on the button. I'm going to make sure that we have the pixel engine selected and then I'm going to click on the default preset. Notice that when I do that it sets a bunch of settings um, and we see save to presets and there is no name there. So now I'm going to enter a name. The convention that is used is the type of brush, like airbrush or block, underscore followed by some description. I'm just going to call it A underscore new. Then I'm going to click on save to presets. I called it A underscore new just so that it would come at the beginning of the list. And notice that it's got a blank uh, screen here. We'll talk about that in a second. Over on the right is a scratch pad, so I can draw on that scratch pad and it will show me exactly what this pen will look like. If I click on this red circle with a line through it, it will clear out that scratch pad. Now if we look at the brush tip, the thing that they want you to see is that the, this is a 5 pixel diameter brush and it's affected by opacity, is affected by pen pressure. So notice I can draw very lightly or dark. The next thing we're going to do is go to opacity and notice that it says enable pin settings. So we're going to uncheck that so now the pin pressure should not affect opacity. And I check it and I draw and notice that somehow opacity is still uh, being affected. Now we've already talked about that and that's because of the flow. So opacity is affecting the entire stroke but flow is affecting just each individual dab of the top. And so a stroke is a whole bunch of dabs of uh, pen tips. So I'm going to go to flow, turn off enable pen settings, and now as I draw, even if I draw lightly, the diameter is affected a little bit, but not the opacity. So it's always full opacity. So the next thing that we're going to do is change the diameter of the brush um, to somewhere around 25. I'm not going to do exactly 25. And now I'm going to draw and that is a thicker brush. Now they want you to see the effect of fade and spacing. So if we look at the dot as I draw my line, if I move fade up to 0.9, notice that the uh, image here shows a very sharp edge or hard edge and if I turn it very low, it has a soft edge. So this is another thing that affects the edge. Um, but even if I turn it all the way up, or let's turn it down here, we don't we see some effect. Let me turn up spacing, and let's turn that up to 10, or close to 10. 
notice that there's that dots of the spacing. Um, so that's what spacing is about. If I turn it to auto and turn it down just a little bit, they recommend 0.8 and you can click in here and type in right click and type in the value, but I've just set it to 0.8 and they recommend that that's the best for inking. So let's look and see what we've got with a soft. Um, that's with the fade down pretty low and now with the fade up pretty high so we can see the difference in those edges using fade but fade is affected by the spacing. The other point that they want to show you is anti-aliasing so you can just turn off or turn on anti-aliasing to show how that affects things. Okay so now let's save our preset. Now we've already saved it once um, we'll get back to that in a, a little bit. We're going to overwrite this preset and you can actually overwrite any of the other presets as well. Um, but before we do that I want to clear up this scratch pad by hitting that circle and now I'm going to draw something in this little square here and that square is actually what's going to control the icon of the tool. So we could type in A new if we want. Now I'm going to decrease that uh, pencil just so I can draw a little bit. Um, and if we did that um, it would overwrite the preset with this new icon. So let's click on that and see there we go a new. So if I make changes here um, again, this is another situation where what is supposed to happen is if I change any parameters, this overwrite preset is supposed to come up. And same thing for the reload because I've made changes to the tool. Do I want to save them and overwrite the preset or do I want to reload them and get back to the originals? Um, so there, that's either a bug in the program or something interacting with your program. Here's how you can work around that. If I change to the, a different icon and then come back, I don't see anything happen. But what I have to do is click on temporarily save tweaks to presets. And when I do that, now if I make a change, again I don't see it right away, but if I click on a different tool, now we see a little marker up here that's showing me that a change has happened. And when I come back to that, now I can overwrite the preset and again it gets saved. But a lot of these um, icons have very nice images. We'll show you how to do that. But with this icon here, let's say that I draw in the scratch pad and I take a look at it and after a while as I'm changing different things this gets kind of messy. So I click on the red circle and oh no I've gotten rid of the scratch pad, but I've also gotten rid of my icon. To take care of that, I click on the paintbrush down here and my icon comes back. I can have a background of a gradient here and put the icon in. I can fill with different colors or uh, uh, different things. Let me go ahead and put that icon back in. Now the interesting thing is I can use a different brush tip. So let's go to one of these over here. And now if I click on that paintbrush, well let me go ahead and clear the scratch pad first. If I click on the paintbrush, it's going to fill it in with the icon of the currently selected tool. Now I haven't changed anything so it's not going to save that tool. I'm going to go back to my A new and I'm just going to put new there. So I've overwritten my icon. I have a new icon. And again, like we said before, that change should be showing up, but the overwrite presets doesn't happen there. So I click and come back. Well, that didn't work, so I've got to tweak an actual parameter so it knows. Now I can come back. Now I can say overwrite preset. And what happens is I've got the new icon. And now when I come out and look at all the presets, I can see that that new brush has been saved and I can use it. Okay, so the last thing that I want to talk about is where does it save this stuff? Well, if I go underneath settings, manage resources, a dialog will come up and under there it says open resource folder. 
Now in the credit documentation, there's an FAQ there, and it shows me where are the configuration files stored. And it, they're stored in different locations on Linux, Windows, or Mac. But that's the location that comes up when we click on Open Resource Folder. The only distinction here is that, uh, at least on my system, maybe, I don't know if this is a change or not, uh, but it doesn't actually take me to Krita, Krita Arc. It just takes me to Krita or Krita RC. So in that location, we see a bunch of folders where you could have brushes or patterns or a number of different things. Um, but one of them of interest is the Paint 2 presets. And if I open that one and look in there, notice that there is the um, file that we've created, the A new. And there's a number of when we, whenever we've saved to the presets, it keeps overwriting the presets. So you kind of have a history there. So those are the preset settings. Let me come back up to the Krita uh, doc, uh, folder. And underneath there, there is a Paint, paint 2 Presets blacklist. So let me open that. Not to get too technical, but this is an XML file. And the thing that you should notice is that there's, uh, re underneath the resource files list, there's file, file, file. And um, each one of them, here's the A new, A new, and so these presets get overridden. So the question you might ask is, why do I need to know about that? Well, if you ever want to delete your presets, you want to delete um, those from the blacklist and the files in the Paint2 presets uh, directory. Of course, you typically don't want to uh, delete all of the presets. You, you want to delete only the, your custom ones. Uh, but you also may want to know this because you may have accidentally um, overwritten one of the default brushes. And again, in the FAQ underneath number four, is there a way to restore the default brushes? When you click on that, it walks through uh, that process where you just delete the file and then you delete the um, entries in the blacklist. And so you can see how to do that. So that was a very quick um, overview of Krita custom brushes. There's tons more that can be learned and uh, changed. But specifically, the thing that I wanted to show is how to deal with opacity. That there's actually multiple things that deal with opacity, and also how the paint can build up or not, depending upon the setting, and also the control over the thickness of the brush. So I hope that's helpful.